So, we're finally back reacting to yet another game theory on Five Nights at Freddy's. It's been a long time. Kinda of surprised that this is not talking about one of the books, uh, judging by the thumbnail and the title. I'm guessing it's gonna be talking about the whole Evan Afton uh, scenario that's been going on lately. From my understanding of the situation, apparently people went back into the Freddy Fazbear's survival logbook and they found yet another name. And the name that they found is Evan, and they believe that that name is the name for the crying child. And apparently, the name also pops up in Blackbird. I don't know which story, I haven't read the book yet. In all, I'm just not too familiar with the situation just because I, I don't really want to keep up with it because I know that if I make a video on it or if I talk about it anywhere, uh, people are just gonna get upset. So I guess this is my time to do it. So once again, we got Golden Freddy back in the thumbnail and the title is Game Theory. Did Reddit just solve FNAF? It's 16 and a half minutes. Let's just hop into it. All right, boys and girls, it is finally time. Game Theory. Did Reddit just solve FNAF? Again, I'm assuming this is gonna be talking about the whole Evan Afton situation, which as I just explained, I'm not too all familiar with. I mean, I get it. You know, I know how people got it. But at the same time, I'm very skeptical because some things just don't add up. So I'm curious to see how MadPad puts it all together. If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for coming out. Please subscribe. We are getting so unbelievably close to 15k and I would love to hit it by March. And smash the like button too. All right, let's hop into it. Jay, can you hear me, Jay? What did you do today, Jay? I went to the movies. We watched a scary one. This sounds like Pennywise. It was so scary that I jumped out of my seat and spilled my popcorn everywhere. Did you do that, Jake? Were you there? Jake. Guessing Jake. this is a book. Then I went to the arcade. I ate a bunch of pizza there. I got red tomato sauce all over my mouth and more red on my clothes. Oh. There were so many other kids there. And then there weren't. I love you, Jake. You know that, right? I love you. I'm guessing Open that this cabinet, is from Jake. the real Jake. Come over here. Open the cabinet, Jake. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open the cabinet, Jake. Good, okay, I'm intrigued. <laughs> Good intro. He's always very creative with them. Hello, Internet. Welcome, Welcome to, to Game, Game Theory. Theory. Where today, the theory is coming from you. That's right. Just That's because me. we're all still waiting for Security Breach to release doesn't mean that FNAF theorists out there have been twiddling their thumbs. In fact, the lack of a new game has prompted the community to go back and comb over all the pieces that were in place for us before. Pieces hey, that's a that reference. they might have overlooked or missed the first time out. And it was this thorough re-review of the clues that prompted what may be the biggest fan theory to blow up in over a year. And it's gotten it pretty was, big. Since 2020 was pretty full big. of us pretty big. <laughs> massive pieces of this franchise's lore. I mean, with the help of Fazbear's Frights, throughout last year's videos, we managed to pinpoint the year of the missing children's incident as 1985. We solidly connected Fox and to Michael Afton. We even concluded the high likelihood that two spirits are trapped inside Golden Freddy, not just one. Our vengeful spirit, Cassidy, as well as our Bite of 83 victim, the crying child. But uh, have you ever noticed that that kid doesn't have a name? I mean, it's been True. six years. Years since he was introduced into the God, man, of FNAF 4, six years. And we still don't have any hints as to what crying child's name might actually be when he's, you know, experiencing literally any other emotion. Wait, is that <laughs> is that crying child? But no, that's happy child. Is that that's angry child? child, and that's confused child. And that's um apathetic child. That is passionate child. Nope, nope, not that one. Ooh, is that emotionally repressed child? Hashtag oh, relatable fun. there. But really, take a moment to think about that. We know the puppet's name, Charlie, and her father, Henry. We know that baby was originally Elizabeth Afton. Purple guy slash spring trap. Purple Elizabeth. guy. The other purple guy is Michael Afton. Oh, there There's go. the missing children's incident victims. Jeremy Fritz, Susie. Damn, Gabriel, we do know a lot of names. The vengeful spirit who is at least one of the things trapped inside Golden Freddy. I mean, there is a name for pretty much every single character in this franchise. Except for this one kid. The one kid who, wouldn't you know, was also important enough to have the first on-screen death of the series. Feels like we should- That's right be able to solve this one by now, right? Like, we should probably have gotten a name for him somewhere along the line. It feels line, good to be back with the FNAF Game Theory. The I'll tell you that. To solve for his name. The pieces have got to be in place for us, right? You said it! Today might just be the day where we solve exactly that. One Freddit user named Wolfie1740Kingdom Incredible guy right the there. ...to finally solve the final name of the FNAF mystery. To finally give the crying child the bite of 83 victims. Victim, the bite of his identity. So break out your tambourines, theorists, because it's Morty time. It's a theory review. Leave your theories in the comments below. I'll pick my favorites in the next episode of Morty.
Now, today's theory starts where <sighs> awesome, all the best awesome, theories man. begin. That... Dabbing Chica. Great. That's right. Let's go! The most important lore item in the whole franchise. Not any of the novels. Certainly not the games. Those are just nope. afterthoughts at this point. Nope, it's back to the children's activity book, FNAF Survival Logbook. In a past FNAF theory, we Dude, had a why isn't Matt Pat covering the coloring book, works. though? <laughs> Basically, there are three people present within this book. There's Mike, who's alive and always writes everything in red pen. There's Cassidy, who haunts the book and speaks in ghostly faded text, but there's a second spirit here, the crying child, who's forced to communicate by actually altering the words that are found in the book. The example that proves it is right here. Okay. Cassidy says, the party was for you, and the crying child responds on page 89 by altering the text of the book to read, it was for me. We know FNAF 4's okay. party wasn't for Mike, and we know Cassidy wouldn't be saying this to themselves. As such, it must be crying child acknowledging what Cassidy Makes has sense. said. Same yeah. thing here on page 59, with Cassidy asking, what do you see? And Crying Child answering on page 109, I can't see. Again, altering the actual print of the logbook. Yep. So that alone was pretty huge, and it went a long way to supporting the theory that both Cassidy and Crying Child possess Golden Freddy. And that alone would be pretty awesome. But it still leaves a major part of this book unsolved. You see, what on page is 95, there's a name? loose thread that's never been tied up. One that has personally driven me crazy for years. It's a grid where you're told to draw an 8-bit foxy. Just another random activity in this children's workbook, right? Wrong. Mm -hmm. The grid oh. is numbered, and you can see in faint print that you're supposed to put letters into the squares, with the first few already being put in. So in our quest yep. to solve Golden Freddy's name years ago, Oh, uh, that feels like such a long time ago. Phrase, My name appeared. We but it also feels like yesterday. The instructions hidden in the book, and then we plug those coordinates into the foxy alphabet grid to get the name Cassidy. Good game, everyone. Let's all treat ourselves to some orange slices Go. and give ourselves a pat on the back for solving another piece of the lore. Except, that's not how it worked. You can imagine my surprise and confusion when the numbers got plugged into not the alphabet grid that was clearly being telegraphed to us, but rather Pretty sure he said the, the same thing search. last time. Yep. And apparently, we were right to do that since Scott Cawthon himself confirmed in his FNAF movie announcement the critical role that a child named Cassidy plays within the lore. But all of this still means Yay. one thing. The alphabet grid is awkwardly left completely unused, despite it obviously needing to be used to solve one of the mysteries within this book. And that's where Wolfie 1740 stepped in. In the book, there's one Cassidy question that's left hanging. On page 31, Cassidy asks, do you remember your name? Uh, of course he does. He's the crying child. That's me, uh, Mr. CC. Afton. His uh, friends call him Bite Victim for short. Just rolls off the tongue. But see, oh, the dude, I hated that. Editors, why? Wolfie suspected that it might also be helpful in solving this other name using, you guessed it, the Foxy Alphabet Grid. What Wolfie noticed was that the crying child specifically uses the knight's four and five shift rating questionnaires to speak with Cassidy. For the first yep. three nights, the section reads as follows Overall, fulfillment, health, stress, purpose, hope and existential dread but on nights four and five Fun. you have other things mixed in here like i'm scared and it was for me so wolfie reverse engineered things taking bite victims answers and matching them to the page numbers where cassidy asks the question to quote from wolfie's own post the first one is i can hear sounds the page it's responding to is 75 which says does he still talk to you and one trend to notice is that all four pages have a piece of blood on it next is it Fun. was for me which is responding to gotta page love blood question of the party was for you. Third is I can't see, responding to page 59's what do you see? And last is I'm scared, which stumped me, so I went off of what I already had. End quote. He then fully That's filled out the chart with alphabet, voice. and going in the order that Bite Victim's answers appear, he followed the grid code to find the following four letters. E-V-A-N. E Evan. Well, after six years, could it possibly be that well, Evan is the name of the crying child? I honestly, did I miss I'm something? Sure. Where's the last time? I'm not convinced off of this alone. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that this is a bad theory at all. Quite the contrary, in fact. Big Anyone brain! tries to figure out the true purpose of that stupid foxy grid is going to get credit in my book. The problem here is the methodology. Throughout the book, Cassidy asks a lot of questions, but only four of them actually matter. Wolfie also points out the blood stains, but there are blood stains on a lot of the pages throughout this book. Yeah. Not just those four. And even then, an answer like, I can hear sound 
sounds to the question of does he still talk to you it feels just yeah off. it's not very precise you know it feels random arbitrarily trying to fit pieces together exactly. in a book that, that has been crafted to be anything but arbitrary i mean the cassidy code alone required you to find six numbers find a page that points to another page on what to do with those six <sighs> numbers and then translate all six of them into the word search multi-step puzzles like this have to be precise in order to work and while the yeah. puzzle pieces in wolfie's theory certainly fit they fit a bit loosely you know i mean even wolfie admits that finding the last n was a bit of a stretch and it forced him to break his own methodology in fact another fredit user godzilla 813105 tried to correct for that to find the n in a different way really one of the other lingering threads of the book this. is a series of tally marks written by mike that never quite add up to anything they're never used or at least their true use has never been discovered but again similar to the foxy grid they must mean something oh, right yeah, to yeah. quote from godzilla's post i realize that there's a magazine foxy is holding on the first page of night one that has five three on it when you add five and three you get eight then i took Big every brain. single tally mark set in the book and added them together i got this from the idea of how the whole quiz thing at the end of the shift says tally up your score putting all of these together gets you 47 four seven on the foxy grid gives you the letter n and hmm. again it sounds good on paper and i love the attempt to make sense of it all but the why of it just doesn't <laughs> line up for me it's why funny. add tally marks to this number on foxy's magazine yeah How are those elements um, related? unless there's like why a would they connection be to a completely like... different set of three numbers gotten from a completely different set of clues right. plus the clues. story just doesn't hold contrary to what godzilla says in their post there is no tally up your score at the end of those nightly surveys thus the rationale just doesn't hold up in short Yikes. it feels like we're convinced that we have a solution to the problem and we're trying to back our way into how to get that's why there. i've been hesitant this with this classic name confirmation bias where as you conduct research you try and find sources to justify your belief or you retrofit <laughs> the data to fit the conclusion that you're looking for and i should know about confirmation bias because lots of our theories over the years play with that very concept yeah. mario is a villain provided you ignore all the times that he saves the kingdom you play as the king in hollow knight as long as you squint really hard during this one cutscene that might disprove that for me theories like those are all about telling a story connecting dots that definitely exist within a game that yeah. flip your understanding of the plot but also sometimes go against what is much more likely and probably much more intended by the developer and the theories that Nintendo. i tend to focus on are the ones where you can connect a surprising number of dots even if one or two tend to disprove it they're just meant to be fun thought experiments it's just a planet I like it doesn't matter with the lore of these worlds but here with FNAF, we have to be really careful. While I love both of these posts, FNAF theories tend to be about trying to solve things, speaking things into the generally accepted canon, and as a result, glad the he's methods talking about by this. which we come to conclusions require more scrutiny. And here, the methodology of arriving at the name Evan yeah. just doesn't hold up as well as I'd like. But that doesn't mean the name Evan. Fazbear Frights time, let's go! here's the twist, friends. This isn't just coming from the logbook. Shortly after Christmas, the Fazbear Frights book series released its latest installment blackbird and it contains what is to date the most moving story in this oh franchise. i still haven't read it the real jake short story number two tells the tale of nine-year-old jake who's dying as a result of a tumor in his brain with his mother prematurely passed away and his father overseas in the military jake is under constant care by the young margie but there's one other special person in jake's life a mysterious figure named simon who speaks to him at night from a small cabinet in his room quote the first night simon had talked to jake simon had made it clear he would be in the cabinet until Jake got well enough to walk to the cabinet. When you can do that, I'll be here waiting for you. End quote. And while it seems like Simon should be a sinister force, since, you know, this is a FNAF book after all, it's actually sure. an expression of love. Margie had created this small doll named Simon with a walkie-talkie oh. inside of him that allows Jake's father to speak to his son, distorting oh. his voice to make him sound younger. Simon, every night, insists that Jake speak about what the real Jake is doing, the one who isn't afflicted with cancer the one who is outside playing with his friends all of this was intended to give jake hope with margie updating the doll every few nights with food stains and scrapes on his knees to reflect the adventures that the real jake has been having it's a beautifully wow. sad story with some legitimate surprises that i'm actually not going to spoil here but the reason i, I bring it up that. is that strangely it is the Damn. only one of the 18 fazbear fright stories so far that has no explicit connection to fnaf at all zero every other story thus far as mentioned a fazbear pizzeria hmm. or connected back to a familiar animatronic hey guys this one glad to see y'all yes, again it does have
have some lore connection to the ongoing Stitch Wraith storyline, but the lack of anything FNAF stands out like a sore thumb when every other story thus far has connected back in some way, which is why the name of Jake's father stands out so strongly. Michael. Jake's father is named Evan, which alone oh. is interesting, but becomes now, man, much dumb. more noteworthy when you consider that he has a brother named Michael. That's what I was thinking of. Living My bad, guys. My bad. And not only that, this is how Michael is described in the book. Quote, he's, well, he's a little different. He's intense <laughs> about making money, and he's really good at it. Just the way he is can make him seem like he's not not human, so he's like a cyborg with bad programming, end quote. <laughs> Two brothers, one named Michael, who gets compared to a human robot hybrid. Where have I heard that one before? Oh, no clue. It's that's me, insane. Michael. And that's just the surface that's level. That's wacky. Looking deeper, this is a story about Even though Scott said that wasn't supposed to sound robotic, but whatever. Just like we see in Sister Location. Heck, you see him communicating through the walkie-talkie that is in a plushie. In the real Jake, it's Simon the doll with a walkie-talkie inside of him. In the games, it's psychic friend Fredbear with a walkie-talkie. You didn't do the song? Oh, what Jake the hell? With his brain tumor and crying child with a bite of 83. In the story, Jake goes on to possess the Simon doll, only for him to then pass on to the Stitch Wraith, sharing that endoskeleton with another soul named Andrew. In the hmm. games, could it be that our crying child dies in the hospital and goes on to possess psychic friend Fredbear, which then somehow gets him passed into the Golden Freddy suit, where he then shares it with another soul named Cassidy. And all of this is happening in a story that has no connection to FNAF, but very clearly has True. a connection yep. to FNAF. I'm just saying that the absence makes it all the more conspicuous. In short, I'm not convinced that the FNAF survival logbook is solved or anything like that. Right now, I'm just not sure the methodology for arriving at a final name is really a I'm glad he though, didn't like jump to conclusions. My personal that's, that's really nice. But strangely enough, the name Evan feels like we're onto something. It has some very compelling evidence to support it from the real Jake story. Yep. So at this point, I want to hear from you let me know are you sold That's on the crying me. child being evan alongside his older brother mike or is this yet another example of scott trying to bury the lead a bit and confuse us by using the same name a bunch of times shoving michael in a bunch of places where he doesn't belong all i know is that i can't wait for the next book coming out in march Let's at go. this point forget security breach it's all about those sick book drops my friend know, right? let's be honest with ourselves at this point uncovering the lore of fnaf requires more reading than your typical jrpg but hey that's just, just a, a theory, theory. A okay game theory. theory thanks for watching and, hey and boys i know you watch just the reaction part of the video so please if you made it to the end because i know you most likely did subscribe all right that was really nice um yeah I'm, I'm glad he didn't jump to conclusions saying that the crying child's name is evan because of everything that people had found in the survival logbook i'm glad he took the time and reflected and thought wait a second some things don't add up here even if we want them to that's kind of the reason why i never made a video on the topic i know a lot of other fnaf youtubers did i didn't just because just like matt i wasn't convinced you know not saying that it's impossible that his name is evan it just it felt a bit loose well i'm sure the connections between michael and evan and blackbird to the characters in fnaf 4 100 percent they're meant to be there the survival logbook, again, it, it just doesn't sell me the way it, it sells other people. Hopefully you get what I mean. I'm not trying to attack people that believe Evan is the name of the crying child because of the logbook. I'm just saying, me personally, I'm not convinced. It's a bit loose. But that's it, and boy does it feel good to be back reacting to FNAF game theories. I don't know. A lot of people, you know, they harp on MadPat for going too in-depth with things, uh, especially with some of the recent theories in the past couple of years. But, I don't know, man. It feels good. It feels good to be back. He's been gone for, I think it was like two months or something. Not a long time at all. But I really do enjoy me some Game Theory FNAF every now and then. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed my reaction. I'm sure he'll make a video on the cliffs when it comes out. And of course, when Security Breach comes out, we'll get a lot of videos on that. Maybe we'll get one next month when the gameplay trailer releases. Maybe Matt will have something to say. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and find out. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side.